Hello and welcome to Charlotte Raid Tactics. This video will cover Insane Hieronymus. If you prefer reading text, I have document guides written by myself linked in the description of this video. Otherwise, I'm Kozu and thank you for coming. Before we start, this video assumes you're already familiar with the raid on Extreme and below. To keep this video succinct, I will only discuss the differences between the lower difficulties and Insane. Hieronymus has gone through a number of adjustments that slightly change the decisions you make before and during the fight. There are two notable passive changes. On Insane, Hieronymus will deal explosive, aka red, damage. This places priority on your blue and yellow armored students. Red armored students are usable if your healing is sufficient, but any lapse in judgment or slow reactions can get them killed immediately. The other passive change relates to the groggy bar. In lower difficulties, Hieronymus could not be groggied via damage. In Insane, this is not the case. After dealing 5 million points of damage, Hieronymus' groggy bar will fill, disabling him for about 5 seconds. This change very slightly helps your team's survival. It's very minor, but it's there. What is not minor are the active changes. All these changes revolve around adjustments made to the raid's main mechanic, the relics. Starting in phase 1, the green relic still does the exact same thing as lower difficulties. Every time you heal them up to 4, Hieronymus receives a 55 increased damage taken debuff, stacking up to 5 times. What is new to phase 1 is the purple relic. The purple relic is considered an enemy which you can lower the health of by targeting it with an X skill. This relic will never be targeted by auto attacks or basic skills. When the purple relic falls to 0 HP, you essentially initiate a trade deal. Your benefits include all your students having their attack buffed by 25%. Hero's defense will also decrease by 1,500 points, which is equal to roughly 16% increased damage before accounting for other defense debuffs. In exchange, the effectiveness of healing received by your students will decrease by 70%. Basically, upon killing the purple relic, you will deal much more damage but your chances of survival will fall dramatically. Usually, you want to make this deal on your strongest teams. Insane Hieronymus has about 24 million HP to burn through, and you're going to need every damage buff you can to make this possible. Activating the purple relic early, in this case, is ideal. However, taking this trade on your weaker teams can lead to a very swift death. With your healing capabilities reduced, it won't take very long for Hieronymus to grind down the health of your whole team with his constant AoE attacks. You don't have to avoid the purple relic entirely though. Survivability isn't important when the fight is literally about to end. Activating the purple relic within the last minute, just after Hero casts his last curse, is a good idea even on weaker teams. On top of the fact that the last moments of the fight are also when you have max green relic stacks, even weaker teams can still partially benefit from the attack buffs. Ultimately, this is an optional trade you can take during any point of the fight. What you find comfortable will be up to you and the potential of the team you have put together. The details of some of Hero's attacks have slightly changed. On top of what it already does in lower difficulties, the curse now also increases the healing received of the cursed student by 30%. If the purple relic is activated, this healing received bonus increases further by another 40%, totaling at 70%. Basically, a cursed student is easier to heal compared to the rest of the team, making it slightly less annoying than it was in easier difficulties. It's worth noting that this healing buff cancels out the healing debuff of the purple relic but the buff also instantly disappears when the curse is cleansed, meaning you can't really utilize this buff to your advantage. In phase 2, where red relic no longer exists, this means there is no longer a reliable way to cancel the ultimate wipe attack. Obviously, instantly killing your entire team every 2 minutes is very unfair. To keep it balanced, Hero's ultimate attack now gives your whole team an immortality buff for 10 seconds. To help your team recover from the brink of death, all incoming healing is increased by 20%, while the immortality buff is active. While the attack itself is no longer an instant kill, your students will still die immediately if you fail to heal them before the immortality runs out. Very shortly after the immortality wears off, Hero will cast a curse. If you are not ready for this, you will very likely wipe. Use the healing buff to your advantage and top up your students health before it's too late. That is all the changes made to Hieronymus Insane. Up next is the team building. One thing to keep in mind as you watch is that over time, the best units you can bring to a fight may change over the course of the game's life. But general team building principles don't really change. 
Thus, I recommend you pay attention to the roles you have to fill out on the team rather than the units themselves. With that said, in order to handle Insane Hieronymus, I would recommend to have on your team at the minimum at least one DPS, one tank, one relic healer, and one team healer. For DPS, you want to prioritize blue or yellow armored students. Red armored students are usable if you have enough healing, but even then, you can probably only afford to run one red armored student. It's very unlikely you will have enough healing to keep two alive. Tanks are self explanatory. Those with some kind of team synergy or those who can fulfill other roles are high priority. As for healers, most students are flexible and can handle either role. It doesn't really matter which students you choose for which role, as long as they are capable of actually doing it. Although typically, your AOE healers will mainly be responsible for healing the team, and your single target healers will most likely be responsible for the relic. The remainder of the team can be filled with whatever DPS or support you see fit. That's all for the team building. Normally, during this part of the video, I will go on to talk about in-game strategies that will help you in your fight against the boss. However, for Hieronymus, there aren't really any special techniques specific for this raid. 80% of the raid happens before the raid even starts. You need to be able to put together competent teams with sufficient investment. The other 20% is all about game knowledge. It's a test of how well you know your students and what they're capable of. A lot of universal micro skills then become important, such as managing your buffs and debuffs so that you will always output the maximum amount of damage. This ends the Hieronymus Insane Guide. I really like what they did to this boss on Insane. The devs managed to introduce a new layer of decisions without making it feel tedious nor redundant. The new mechanics are very natural and fit right in with the rhythm and nature of the raid. As difficult as it is, I think Hieronymus is a good boss but that's just my opinion. Good luck and have fun.